All right, so I put my Bible down. So what you're going to have to do for me, woman of God, you're going to actually have to just go in, just read verse by verse like we do, and then I'll address it then as we go along. Yes, sir. So if we are actually on Facebook, if you can hear me or see me on Facebook, let me know. Yes, sir. All right. Good night to everyone. Everyone that's coming in on Facebook. Um, we are on, on, bless everyone that is on Zoom. Let's go in. Let us have this quick this quick session in Facebook. Let us invite a few persons in. As a matter of fact, let us invite as much people in as possible, and then let us bring this thing to an end. We're not going to be here for long. It's going to be a quick session. So as you're coming in, invite someone, invite someone, invite, don't even stop and take a breath yet. Just invite someone as you get here. So we can actually have this quick, quick teaching and then we'd be out of here. But before we go into the topic, and I know Sister Betty has a question. So I'd like to take, take your question. Let, this is my disclaimer. So the question that we're about to take might not be directly related to the, to the teaching that we're about to have. So let us have this question quickly. Then we can go into the teaching. Amen. 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 All right, sister. Okay. Okay. Couple teachers, but okay. The first question is sorry. Sorry, my first one. Okay. If all the you have if you have descendants, descended. If you have descendants, yes. Yes, that is descended. All that is ascended to heaven. You have some people who are descendants to go, descended to go to hell. Um, you mean descendants? All right, this is the thing. Are uh, you mean like you're talking about people being predestined to go to heaven or hell? But yes. Um, people are. There's a scripture that says those he for knew he predestined, and that actually have a lot of people thinking it means predestined for heaven or hell. That's not so. Otherwise, it contradicts. It says the statement that says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. It so means, if you have a select amount that will be saved, then whosoever could not actually be counted in that equation. Correct? Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's like you go, and if you read also, can't remember exactly where in Matthew is found, where he said, go to the byways and highways, and they invited everyone, the good and the bad and everybody. So therefore... I don't think anyone is specifically destined for heaven or, or, or should I say for eternity or for hell. He says that we will be judged according to our works. Right, right. So therefore we have to then just take responsibility and say, hey, you live the, if you live the nasty life, you will literally then be in a position, let me see something. If you live a nasty life, then you are going to be actually then um, be judged based on the life you lived. Make sense? Yes, sir. But okay, sir, didn't yes. he say didn't, that place was not created for us? It wasn't. But though it wasn't, some of us have invited ourselves there to the party. That's it. That's it. That's not a party you should be excited about going to. Okay. Next question. Okay. Okay. I know the new, the Old Testament is from Genesis through. A lot of people think the New Testament is from March, but we understand it's from Acts. So yes. you have the Our Father prayer. Yes. And Our Father prayer was in the Old Testament. It was. Right? But if I can so, quickly give a quick insight on what the Old Testament means. A lot of people that's listening in that might not have heard this before, they might be wondering, what is the Old Testament? So by tradition, we, are, we actually know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and um, as the New Testament. But in terms of, um, that's the way it was ordered. It was actually, it was placed in that order or it was given the title by the guys who did the translation. That's not what Jesus called it, right? Okay. I would call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John an intro, introduction to the New Testament. The New Testament starts when the new covenant is started, which is in Acts where the, Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost, which means the new, the new covenant or the new, yeah, new covenant is a good word. Okay. So was there a new, because you have person say, Lord, teach me to pray. And we all mm -hmm. know of the Our Father prayer. So yes. is there a prayer for the, in the new creation? 
this is one that was instructed by the Holy Spirit. That's 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 a very good question. The first thing first, when you do not have direct access, then you you use ritualistic access. If you understand what I mean, say say yes. The difference. I understand, but you can explain yes. it. So direct access means you can go in and you can talk to God yourself. Ritualistic access means that most times you need the blood of some animal to get in. Because of what Jesus did, you're no longer in that dispensation. You no longer need the blood of any animal to have access to God because Jesus gave us full access to God. So the question you ask is simply this. Do you have a specific prayer now? This is beauty about it. Prayer is dialogue with God. We are now in the decree stage. Prayer is not what it used to be. We are, our prayer is, we, many people in this time think prayer is making your request known. Come on then. Talk right. to me because, yes, because that, yes, people think that prayer is making your request known. You don't need to go in and try to make your request known in a system that gives you the right to decree. So prior now is actually communication between you and God. Bless you, bless you, Sister Bailey. Yes. You have also Sister Gloria. Good night to everyone. If I missed you, Sister Charmaine, everyone that's coming in, if I missed you, God bless you, welcome. Um, so it, it, it's one of these things where it is actually saying that we must understand, hey, guess what? Prior in this dispensation is dialogue with God. It's not begging because you don't need to beg God for anything. He has made provision for everything when he died, when Jesus died on the cross. He says, no, decree a thing and it shall be established. You don't need to beg. So therefore, in this new dispensation, what is the command that was left for prior? He says, God is a spirit. So those that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then he went one step further and he says, we know not what we are to be praying for. Come on, anyone, anyone Amen. know the scripture? Amen. But the spirit himself make intercessions on our behalf with groans that cannot be uttered with your tongue. What does that mean? It means if you're led by the spirit, you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. You go in and you allow the spirit to actually bless you, bless up Sir Christy. Um, so you are in a position where you're allowing the spirit to lead you and you're not actually trying to figure it out by yourself. Um, if you truly believe you don't know exactly what you are to be praying for, then you need the spirit to do so. So you don't want to follow a pattern of how to pray. You want to follow the spirit of how to pray. The spirit of God will let, literally let you know the do's and the don'ts, what to do, what to say, how to say it. So okay. I hope that made some sense. It, it does. I appreciate that. I have one mm -hmm. more question. Okay. I mean, well, this one isn't a question pretty much, but we spoke about when there's a deliverance or healing and laying of hands, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where we see where you, where you demonstrate healing, but you don't yes. physically lay hand. Yes. But there is people that I've seen laying of hands mm -hmm. and not opening their mouth to speak. Yes. But yet still, once mm -hmm. they put their hand on the person, they stand up there like, uh, Sorry, and then, so, so and they then get the healing once someone lays hands on them, right? Repeat that. So they get their healing once someone lays hand on them. Well, I don't, I, I cannot say they, they got healing, but the mm -hmm. person who was the minister, well, they laid hand on an individual. Sometimes they don't even utter words, mm -hmm. but once they're done, they would probably tell the person receive and they receive. All right. So this is the thing. You don't have to, have to when I said a command must be given, it doesn't mean a verbal command. It, it doesn't mean you have to say it with your mouth. <clears throat> okay. I think I even said that last night that I myself have actually gone in and I've done commands in my mind and I've watched them manifest in the physical. So I don't want to actually say they did not give a command. I'm just going to say that if they didn't, then that's the incorrect way to do it, but they could have done it in their mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a command, because it's not verbalized with your mouth. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of things in the spirit that is not done by speaking with your mouth. 
you'd be surprised. If anyone has ever had a spiritual encounter, then you'll realize that you don't even speak with words. Anyone know this? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. I've had encounters and I've never opened my mouth to speak, but yet I'm speaking. For those who okay. don't understand, they're thinking, hey, he's losing it. No, I'm not. Okay. okay. <laughs> One more. Okay. In the Bible, it says, if that if you don't have a vision, mm -hmm. a man that doesn't have vision shall perish. Which script, where is that from? We need a Bible scholar. <laughs> Sorry. I can look, I could look for it, so. Okay. I know you perish for lack of knowledge, but lack of vision I can see could possibly make you perish too. It may be the one that's saying um, where there's no vision of people perish. That may Proverbs be- Proverbs 29. Okay. Proverbs yeah. 29, 18. Do me a favor, read it for me. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law is happy. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Let me go. Yes. Let me, but let me go. You, don't even, you can read more if you want, but I understand what was said. I understand what was said. Okay. So the question you were asking me, Sister Betty, is. Uh, that's what's to explain. I think that's the scripture mm -hmm. that was referring to. Thank you, sisters. But if you could have just... Um... Yes, but what is vision? Vision is subject, right? When I say subject, it means um, because a vision might not be obvious to someone else doesn't mean that it's not there. And that doesn't mean it's there either. <laughs> Let me make that plain. But I'm saying the reason why I said it like that is because I have to, what is vision? Because if my vision is to go out and become a, a butcher, for example, I know it's random. I just chose something randomly. If I chose to become a butcher, that's vision. If I chose to go in, so, it, so vision is subject. So vision is subject to the person that is actually, um, it might be different from the observer, for someone observing you, um, compared to the person that is actually then displaying that vision or carrying that vision. So that's a very open question, if that makes sense. Mm, that's interesting. It does, sir. Mm -hmm. It does. I appreciate you very much. Bless you. Uh, we have a question on Facebook. Oh, we have a question on Facebook. Okay, one second. Apostle... Bless you, Sister Charmaine. What is the Bible for to help us not to make repeat mistake or guide us to understand the ways of God? All right, let me explain something to you. I've said this on many occasions, and sometime if you're religious, um, Sir Lindu, salute, sir. Long time. All right, many people, if you don't understand, then there could be an easy misconception. Let me explain something to you. Ah, uh, this is going to be a very controversial answer, and I hope that you're ready for it. Are you ready? If you are, say yes, man. Ready? Let's go, sir. Here we go. All right, check this out. The unfortunate truth is many Christians have, and I pray to God someone stick around and listen and don't just jump to a conclusion about what I'm about to say. Uh, many people have actually just taken the Bible and they read it, and they have now started deciding to live their life based on the Bible without understanding the spirit, That without understanding. As a matter of fact, that's the, pretty much what we're going to be talking about tonight going into the topic of understanding the written word and the living word, because I hear people trying to make a distinction between them as if it's two separate words, which is the same word, right? I kind of gave it away already. But what I'm saying is simply this. Do you know how many people I know that can actually, they know this word so much, way more than me, in terms of they, they, they don't understand it better than me, but they know it better than me. They can recite every scripture. They can tell you what verse they can find it in. I don't have them skills. I'm not criticizing it either. I just don't. But I must also say I have seen many people who can recite but has no authority with the reciter. It's almost like poetry. Anyone know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
Now, the reality why I'm saying this is because the Bible is not the source. Uh, yeah, I know if you're religious, you thought it was the source. The Bible <laughs> is not the source. So if you should lose this Bible, what would happen? If no more Bible was ever printed and every Bible that is printed is destroyed, what would happen? We'll have the Holy Spirit to help us, don't you, sir? Okay. So therefore, even with this Bible here, we still have the Holy Spirit too, right? Come on, then everybody be quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Listen to reality then. The reality is simply this. This is a MAP, just like a treasure map that pirates have. You ever notice that the people trying to kill each other to get that map? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does the map have any value? Only if it leads you to the treasure, sir. No, you understand. Only the map only has value if there's a treasure, a true treasure that's hidden in its confines. And if it can lead you to the treasure, now check this out. This is the map that leads to the treasure. The unfortunate truth is many people have found this map and they've made the map the treasure. Mm. This is not the treasure. The treasure is in the map. Yeah. Amen. But the map is not the treasure. I hope someone understands what I'm saying. Yes, Amen. sir. The map is not the treasure. That simply means that if you are here, you should be trying to find Christ from this. Don't yes. make it your God. This is not your God. Amen. Yeah. And if you're religious, you might be rebuking me because you've already gone in and you've done the wrong thing by making this your God. What about those who can't read or write, who can't even spell your name? You're telling me they can't have God? This is literally the MAP that leads to the S-O-U-R-C-E. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So therefore, do not actually try to make this your source. Amen. The source can be found in this, but this is not your source. Make sure you know that. Amen. So we're going to pretty much be talking about that anyway. So we're going to be looking. We're going to read some scriptures. It's going to be a quick session. So I'm oh, hoping that you guys God. are tuning in. Sorry, say again, woman of God. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry. Okay. Question was asked. Uh, so, oh, yes, you can invite. Yes. Yes. No worries. You can invite someone. And I'm just looking in Zoom. No, I didn't see it. Praying in your mind can be effective. Well, if it's not effective, I'm in trouble. I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. I can pray absolutely anywhere because that's the beauty of the confines of your mind. You can pray in your mind absolutely anywhere. Drive in and pray. Don't close your eyes, though, while you're driving. That's a bit crazy. All right, so we're going to go in and, the, and the, the topic to be discussed tonight is this what is the difference between the written the written word and the and the living word i said spoken but i hope i put living there because it's living word not spoken word i meant living in case i put spoken people actually do not understand so we put few scriptures that we're going to be presenting and then as a matter of fact, woman of God, the one I gave you first, if you can put that last, that's first John one, we'll do that one last. So we're gonna yes, start uh, at Matt, we're gonna start of Psalms 119. One okay, to sir. One through sixteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Psalm one nineteen. Whenever you, you want me to go. When you're ready, woman of God. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Blessed are the undefiled, by the way who walk in the law of the Lord, verse two. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart, three. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways, four. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently, five. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Six. All right, before you move on, I want you to notice you're hearing law and you're hearing statue and you're hearing all that. Now, I'm pointing this out because that was the word of the time. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Verse six. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Again, he's yes. using the word commandment word again. Yes, sir. Seven. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I 
shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Verse eight, I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Verse nine, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. 11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Okay, so what was David talking about there when he said his word as he, as, as he hidden, have he hidden in his heart that he might not sin? He was talking about the laws, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Verse 12. Yes, go, go, ahead, on. Go, on. go on. It's okay. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. 13. With my lips I have declared all thy judgments of thy mouth. 14. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all thy all riches. 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. 16, I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. That's it, sir. Okay. The whole way you'll hear word and statue and law and precepts, they're all the same thing. So they, it might be mentioned in different phrases representing the same thing throughout the whole text, correct? Yes, sir. Now, he's talking about the whole testament there. So, therefore, we know that he's not talking about the embodiment of God himself. He's talking about the laws of Moses handed down, right? Yes, sir. Is there a distinction between the law of Moses and God? Is there a distinction? I hope I can actually fix my, um, my, my quick presentation. You can see my presentation. Eh? I couldn't find no blank paper. So <laughs> <laughs> sir I, can you clarify that question i mean i'm i think i know what you're asking but i'm not sure all right see the unfortunate thing a lot of people actually think that the word that is written is actually different from the word that is god so they call it the word of god but they do not understand that even the word that is written is god himself Yes, sir. This is but we'll go in there and we'll explain that. There's a few scriptures to go through. So we'll go through the scriptures first. Then I'll bring back my uh, my explanation of this dialogue. We're not going to be here for long. So let us see if we can get to it. All right. So the next one. Psalms 119, 105. Yes. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So therefore, if you follow the precepts of God, then you will not go astray. Isn't that what he's saying? Yes, sir. Okay, pretty straightforward. Go on, woman of God. The next verse is Hebrews 4 and 12. Mm -hmm. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. All right, and this is very important. Sorry, sorry, I'm putting you off. Go for it. Finish what you're saying first. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If if I need to stop, Apostle, it's, it's all cool. We can stop. No uh, worries. It's that I I am I, um, because I'm trying to skip between Facebook and Zoom. I'm not in sync with you. I'm sorry. You go for it. Okay. Um, dividing the sunder of the soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay. Are um are they talking about the written words there? No, sir. Okay. I'm making a this I'm making sure I make a distinction so you'll understand when they're talking about words that are written and when they're talking about when the when the word of God, God himself is being manifested. And even though you should understand that there is no there is no distinction between God and his word, right? All right, sir. Okay, go for it, woman of God. The next verse is 2 Timothy chapter 3, mm -hmm. verses 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, 
thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, so what he's saying in other words is what you're seeing is literally God expression in writing. Yes, Can sir. I see it? Wait. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. God's expression in writing. All right, woman of God. Do we have any more? Yes, sir. Genesis 3 8. Okay. Genesis I'm going to have to. Go ahead, sir. Is that which? Do you have any more before Genesis? Um, I go, have to, Re go to Revelation and leave Genesis for now. When you read, okay. I'm going to actually do Genesis and uh, the other one at the same time. Okay, so Revelation 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Okay, so we also know that he is the word too. That's the word. Jesus in heaven is actually called the word. Amen. As a matter of fact, since we are there, if we can actually go in and we can read then, um, what's the next one we, we were supposed to read before? That uh, one. Um, Genesis 8 or Genesis John 8. 1 and 1? Let's go to John first, yes. Okay, sorry. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word <laughs> in I the beginning was the word. Guys. And the word was with God, and the word was God. I'm going to use my dialogue, and I'm going to explain some things. So I needed those two. As I said, it's a quick session. I wanted to explain the difference between the living word and the written word. Let me give you my notes quickly, then I'll go ahead. And then we'll actually read um, Genesis. This is what I'm saying. So people say, right? They said, um, the word shouldn't be seen. I'm giving you the law. The word shouldn't be seen as the written and the living word, but should be seen as the living word expressed in writing. If that makes sense to you. Yes, sir. yes, sir. I've heard someone and they were teaching and they were making a distinction as if you have the living word and they make it, I don't know if you've ever heard it. People start making distinction. Like it's not the same. And anyone else have heard this before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there's a distinction where you're saying, you know, you have the Rima word and the written word. And I'm like, mate, the Rima word and the written word is the word. <laughs> be one and the same, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's just that the word can be expressed in his creation however he chooses. Amen. Okay. So I'm going to go in. We've been through this before. This is not for the fire carriers. This is more for Facebook. I hope you like my dialogue, my diagram. Mm. Okay. And this is for anyone that is actually in Zoom that I've never seen this before. You guys can see me? Yes, sir. All right. So understanding how the Godhead works or understanding how God operates. There is actually only one God. One God. Only one God. There's not three gods who are in um, covenant with each other like some people believe. You. That's right. One God. That one God is, so this triangle is, it might not look like an equilateral triangle, which means all sides are equal. It is meant to be one, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So in this triangle with all sides equal, in the middle, you have God. Now I'm going to actually explain the function of the Godhead and how the word works. In the function of the Godhead, the same God is manifested as the king. That's the father. The father is represented uh, or manifested as the king. Same God. Then you have the word. In the beginning was the word, as we were just reading. And the, re and, and the word is manifested as his authority. Then you have the spirit, and the spirit is actually manifested as his power or his manifestation of might. So he speaks, and whatever he speaks is the command, the word that comes from his mouth, and he is the one that express or fulfill those commands. Make sense? Yes, sir. There is no contradiction between them because there, it, it, it's not three persons, it's one person. Just like Jesus is also the lion and the lamb, so, so too, God is the Father, 
the word and the power. Now, some of you guys already know this answer because I have taught this before, but some of you might not know. If you were supposed to put sun, where would you put sun? Got a word. That's what I thought too. And that's why I had it. I had sun here and then I changed from here and put it right here. Because the sun is the manifestation of the God. Yes, sir. For unto us a child is born and to us a son is given. Son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government will be on his shoulder. But <laughs> so you can't put him anywhere here. You must put him here. In the center. Yes, sir. And he shall be called the wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. You got the gist. Prince of Peace. Yes, sir. Can I ask a question? For sure. Please. Before, before Jesus came in the, I mean, before Jesus was resurrected, I guess it was a short time period, but mm -hmm. before he was resurrected, he was he was just down there with the bottom in the bottom corner. I'm thinking, and then after resurrection, he was he became one with the guy here, sir. One hundred percent. You would have seen the manifestation in the New Testament of multiple of the Godhead. Anyway, you would have seen it, but you would have seen the fulfillment after his death and resurrection. Now let me explain. He says, "Show me the Father." And he said, have I been with you so long yet you have not seen me? Yes, sir. So therefore, you see that he called himself the father. The Bible says that he is the exact image of an invisible God. That's right. That's right. So therefore, he was already all three before, but not always manifested. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got you, sir. Yes. Yeah, so it's one of these things. Why am I showing this? I wanted to show you the function. So you see you have the inner triangle and you have my little creation of a few outlines. It's not the best one. I can't find no white paper. And I didn't <laughs> want to take my daughter's um, cartridge paper. <laughs> so she would have been coming. Daddy said, dad, 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 that's mine. All right. There's a ranking system. I didn't say one is higher than the other, but there's a ranking system. I think I explained the difference between headship, rulership, and um, leadership. Who remember yes, that? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so... The father is the head. I didn't say he's the ruler because he's not ruling over himself. Right. <laughs> but in the order of things, the father is the head. That means he's the king, though he is the same as, as the word and he's the same as the spirit. But there's a ranking system and there is a system of operation. System of operation says that everything, man shall not live by bread alone, but by? Every word that proceedeth. Continual okay. Word. Do you yes. know what is every word that proceeds from the, the mouth of the Father? No, Jesus. Well, right. so, so yes. every word that proceeded from the mouth of the King is the word. Every word. Yes sir. yes, sir. But unlike what we think, the word is a being. The word is not just an expression. The word is a being. The word speaks. The word as expression. The word Amen. As emotions. The word is a person. Does that make sense? Yes, Amen. sir. So therefore, it is very important that we understand then how it works, that the word is alive. The word is not just written here. So I have father written here. I'm not just talking about this as a word. I mean, the word actually is alive. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. Mm -hmm. So let me explain to you what this means. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. It says nothing that was made, everything that was made was made through him. And without him, would anything that were, was made would have been made. That means every he, he, he is God. He has a part in every part of creation. He's Amen. not just someone you invite in. When the father said, let there be, he, that's the word he was speaking. And he's the one that fulfilled the command. Why am I showing you this? This is the same word that came from the mouth of God that is actually written in the book. Amen. So it's not like he is the written word or the living word. He is the same word just expressed in writing. It can be expressed in a thought. It can be expressed verbally. It can be expressed in writing. It can be expressed through sight. So though he is called the word, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a sound. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It's bigger than a sound. It's, it's bigger than a sound. He is The word is a source and not just an action, if you get that. 
Yes, sir. That is the reason why I wanted to leave Genesis for last so you can see that the word is a source, is a being, is a person. I don't mean person as in human being, but a being, a spiritual being. The word is God. So can we go to Genesis and see what it says about the word? Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. When I read that the first time, I was really laughing. I was like, whoa. So they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. <laughs> you know, how many people have read that a million times? They've overlooked it and have only seen it just as God walking in the garden, not, ex not understanding that they were the writer of Genesis was careful to explain which aspect of God or who is walking in the garden. Amen. So Adam and Eve heard the voice of God, which is the word, the voice of Amen. God, walking in the garden. And they hid themselves. It means his voice or his word actually has <laughs> legs <laughs> and speaks and thinks. Amen. So it's one of these things where though the word be separate from the father, the word and the father is the same God, just up, just manifested differently. Yes, sir. We read before where you see that the lion and the lamb are one and the same, right? Yes, sir. And if you're a parent, then you can simultaneously be a mother and a wife at the same time. Yes, sir. Yes. It doesn't take away from the other. Mm, when you're talking good. to your children, your mother. That's good. When you're talking to your husband, I hope you don't be mother. <laughs> 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 talking to your husband, you be wife, not mother, right? So yes, sir. Sir. Mm -hmm. Question. Yes, for sure. So right there and then mm -hmm. with this, we are, we are, heirs of the kingdom we are sons and daughters of god we are we are the walking word that's we, the way we're well, supposed to live thing. put it like this the word is looking for our god is looking for people to actually manifest in as a matter of fact i didn't mm -hmm. read that scripture but i wondered if we can find it he said i will not leave you comfortless and another one says let a little while the world will not see me but you will John Amen. chapter 14. So if, if you can put that in Facebook for anyone that's in, even though we might not read it, they can go in and they can read it, but yes, I want sir. to make it plain. That if you understand this <clears throat> and you understand the function of how it works, and I said I, I, I've done this before, so maybe if you've not seen it before, then it's your first time, but I've done this teaching before, way more in-depthly. It's a summary of an in-depth teaching. This is saying, it says, in the beginning, God. No mention of the Father, the Word, or the Spirit, just God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right? Right. The earth was void and, and without form, and the Spirit of God. So the first part of the Godhead to be exposed was the Spirit. The Spirit of God was over the surface of the deep. And then I ask this when I'm teaching, who is the next to be, to be identified? And someone is like, well, they said the spirit, but no one said the father or the word. And I said, well, it's easy. If you understand the function of the Godhead, then you know who got identified next. Because if, the, if it's the one that speaks is the king or the father and what comes from his mouth is the word and who does the function is the spirit, then we just knew who the spirit was. But then their next line says, and God said. So how do I know that it's a king that is actually being identified? Is because the king is the one that speaks the word, correct? Yes. If you notice that when Jesus is functioning as the word, he said something very important. He said he is there to do the will of his um, father. Yes, yes, yes. And by what means did he fulfill the will of his father? 
by doing what yes. you were supposed to do. Yes, but can you do it by your flesh? No, sir. No, by the spirit. By the spirit. So now you see the, the Holy function spirit. coming through. The fathers give a command. Mm -hmm. The word carries that command. The spirit fulfills spirit. that command. Yes. yes, yes, sir. I do nothing of my own, say the word, but whatever my father said, yes. that I do. Then when he said he will not leave you as often, he says he will pray the Father and he will send you another comforter. Yeah. Even yes. the of truth. The Holy Spirit. And he said he will not speak of his own. Mm -mm. But whatsoever the Father tell him of me, that he will say. That means that the, the Spirit only is only deployed or the Spirit is only activated when the Father, when the King give the authority of the Word, then the Spirit moves, if you understand me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that is really important that you understand then how the word works. So the word is literally then the command or the authority of God, the function of God's command that will then give the spirit authority to operate. The spirit does not move without the word and the word cannot actually go forth without the father. Anyone understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Still one God. We're not talking multiple gods. One God. One God. Just different. Amen. Yes. Right? Amen. Yes. Thank you very much, Sister Dora. Says John, John 14 says, John 14, 26, about the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which, uh, which, will, which the Father will send, sorry, in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the spirit is not there on his own agenda and the word is not there on his own agenda. And so the word is there to do what the king has said and the spirit will do what the word has command. But the king is there to do what the body, what, the, what God himself wants himself one all right sir morgan says good night sir good to have you he says um he determined that the tree was good um contradicts what god said about what he created was good ends they had to hide that's true that's true but we're looking for we're looking at it from the perspective of the word so you are totally right i was looking at it from actually showing that the word that was actually in the garden had a character and as, as a matter of fact, if you read on, you'll realize that there was dialogue between the word and Adam. Which they, so you see, they could have easily said that God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, but they said the word of God, even though the word of God is God, right? Mm -hmm. The word of God is God. So sister um, Angela asks, who is the source? Yes, the source is God. As a matter of fact, there is no contradiction between the God in the Godhead. Because the Godhead, they're one. As a matter of fact, it's not like they are good friends that are in unity. They are the same person functioning. Body. Yes, it's the same person functioning different jobs in different ways. Make sense? One body. Yes, one God. That is the reason why you see in the mid of the, the triangle, it is said, it said God. And by putting God in the midst of the triangle, then it clearly shows that, guess what? It's just, um, it's the same God. But if you want to see the king, you talk to the father. Mm -hmm. You Amen. want his authority, you use mm -hmm. the word. And if you want the spirit, oh, yeah. the power, oh. because the thing about it is, unfortunately, you see a lot of things that take place and someone say, I can feel the anointing. Mm -hmm. You can feel the power. You can't feel the anointing. The anointing is a commission, right? No, no my son, the God, father, they, they come to the son. <clears throat> there you go. No one come to the father, but through the son. Exactly so. All right, then. As I said, it's not going to be a long one. Any questions? Do we have anything before I actually move on? It's good, sir. I wanted to make sure people understand. Good night, Sister King that there is no distinction between the written word and the living word. The living word can be expressed in multiple ways. Any instruction from the father is the word. If you understand that, say yes. If you don't, say explain it. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Any instruction from the Father is the word. Any instruction from the Father. So therefore, all it in your heart. Yes. So it means even the commandment was the word. Hence why he said Jesus did not come to put away the law, but to but to fulfill the law. Simple means there's no contradiction between him and the word that was actually given in the law because it was him. Amen. It was him. So he is saying, hey, this is not a contradiction. This is just an upgrade. <laughs> If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yes. Not a contradiction, but an upgrade. Yes. There is no distinction between the written word and the living word. Anyone understand that? Yes, sir. Because the written no and the living word are one and the same. I'll take a few questions and then we're going to actually call it a night. Unless you have other questions. Do we have any questions? I hope so. You guys understand the diagram. Understand what I'm the explanation of the dotted. If you don't, then don't say yes. Whether it be on Facebook or actually a Zoom, just say I don't understand it. Can you make it plain? Can you break it down? Whatever needs to be done, then we will do it. If you don't understand it, say I don't understand it. You want to go through it again a little bit, sir? All right, let me go very quickly while you actually, while anyone that has the question, look for it. There is one God. Yes, sir. This is meant to be an equilateral triangle. And that means it has three equal sides, even though this might not actually represent one. It is mm -hmm. meant to be. You have God in the middle, which says that there is only one God. Oh, there God. is not three gods. There is one God. Oh, God. But within the personality of this one God, you have the father that is actually manifested as the king. And then you have the word that is then expressed as the authority of God. Then you have the spirit, which is then actually expressed as the power of God, the creative side of God, the one that does whatever the king says. Now understand just like you can be a parent and a brother or a sister at the same time or a child at the same time, yet you're the same person, so too we have one God. But when it's time for him to be, ex be expressed as the king, he is the father. Mm -hmm. And when it's time for him to be expressed as the authority, he is the word. And when it's time for him to show you his power, he is the Holy Spirit. Okay. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And each part of the Godhead has a separate function. And unfortunately, most of us don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So based on the function of the Godhead, you do not pray to the word. Who do you pray to? The Father. So you pray to the Father. The Father actually then commands by the word. Okay. And the Spirit carries out the command. Uh, yes. So he says, none come to the Father but through me. Yes, sir. But God is a spirit, and those that worship Him must worship Him in what spirit and in truth. truth. So you have to have the spirit, and you have to have the word, because without the word, you have no access to the King, and without the King, who actually has the final say, mm -hmm. and is your portion. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right. Makes sense. If makes sense, yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Brilliant. Give you guys a little time to ask whatever questions you have, whether it be pertaining to this or to something else. I'll answer your questions and then we'll bring this one at, in this night to an end. What's left one? Yes, for sure, go for it. <laughs> My. Me? Oh yes, 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 go for it. Okay. You said you had a question? I knew, okay, Jesus rebuked Peter. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And then it says, Jesus said to Peter, he couldn't wash his feet. Right? No, you mean Peter said to Jesus, all right. So I don't know, I can't remember I exactly that. where it's at, but um, bless you, sister Edwina. 
All right, so this is, I think what you're asking is, so Peter said, so Peter was saying to Jesus that it was not right, like it was not right for him to wash their feet. Is that what you're asking? Oh, I, I missed what it said. So that's why I wrote that. Okay. I didn't go back and look at it, but I said I would have just asked the question. So I'll I ask the question and I'll correct you. I know that's the question. The question right. was, mm -hmm. I should have said, who said that it was Peter said to Jesus, but Jesus said to Peter, he couldn't Peter wash said to feet. Jesus. Peter, so, yeah, so Peter told Jesus, nah, um, good night, Sister Stephanie. Peter said to Jesus, no, nah, um, that um, it's not right for them to, for him to wash their feet. And then Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you cannot partake in what I am about. So he said, don't just wash my feet, but wash my head too. And he was like, nah, you don't need to wash your head. <laughs> he just needs to okay. wash your feet. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Thank you. Welcome, woman. God bless you. Any, any other questions? How about on Facebook or even in Zoom? Do you have any pressing questions? Since it's a very short teaching, I would love for you to actually ask any question you have, and then we will actually go from there. Question, 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 question. Titus. No question, eh? Apostle, the teaching is good. Mm -hmm. It's strong. It's it's good. Okay, it's so then if well. there are no questions. Let me tell you why I leave questions. The reason why I even incorporated a question in every single teaching is simply because I have always had a problem when someone teach and not explain. So I made it my duty to make sure that whatever I am teaching is open to questions and then I'm, if, if you're anything like me, then the question, the answers must make sense too. Yeah, so. Good night, sister princess, yeah. princess, sorry. Yeah, so if, if I was, I've always been inquisitive. I learned a lot from questions. My questions were never meant to challenge, but to get insight. So then if someone comes and asks questions, I'm assuming it's the same thing that you're not here to challenge, but to get, to gain insight. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. But if there is no question, then there is no question. I give it a few more minutes just to see if there's any on Facebook and then we'll bring it to an end. Okay. Yeah, bring it to an end. Sorry, someone had some someone said something? And me, sir. I want to make sure that I get I got this teaching. But something I don't think I could do me a favor, woman of God. If you can fix your mic, I think it's kind of going in and out. Okay, can you hear me now, Apostle? I can hear you. Okay, the written word and the living word is the, are the same. Yes. Okay, I'm going to give an example. Um, you'll hear they say that, um, speak the word. So my example would be the enemy's coming at you and you said, Satan, I rebuke you. Is that both the living word and the written word? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Do me a favor. I'm sorry. I just saw um, Sister Princess's question and it distracted me for a second. I heard the first half of your question. Can you repeat it again? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the written word and the living word is are the same. Yes. My question is, I would hear they say, speak the word. Mm -hmm. And let's say the enemy is coming at you. So the word that you would speak, for an example, is Satan, I rebuke you. Is that, is that the written and the living word at the same time? It is. It is. Unfortunately, most time when people make that statement, they're talking specifically about the written word. The written but word. But you right. don't have to use a written word to be speaking the word. Anything Amen. inspired by God, anything, anything inspired by the Holy Spirit is coming from the mouth of God and is actually the authority of God and is then executed by the power of God. So even if you have never come on then, I said I imposed the will of God. Where is it written? That's his word. It's a word, but it's not the written word. It's not the written. Okay. Mm -hmm. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness is consumed. It is there, but then it's a matter of understanding. <clears throat> it's not in the map. Yes, he speaks. So whatever he's expressing, do you know sometimes what causes people to lose fights, spiritual wars, 
is that they're busy searching for a scripture to recite when they should have just been expressive in the spirit. Mm. You don't need to go in. As a matter of fact, you want to hear the truth? Yes, sir. You don't need to tell the enemy according to Matthew 5, whatever. And that's just me picking a random scripture. It might not mean anything. You don't need to say that. Let me tell you why. Because if you understand like I understand, and it was only a few hundred years ago that they actually put the um, that they actually put the 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 the, the Bible into uh, into the order that it's in, in terms of putting it into the different books, putting them into the different um, chapters. There were no chapters, no chapter one, no chapter two, no verses, no nothing. If if you know that, say yes. That's new. Yes, sir. Many people don't know that's new. If you go in and look at the original scrolls, it's a continuous writing with no chapters. Mm -hmm. So this has been adapted for our consumption. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So the Holy Spirit, the representative of Jesus Christ today on earth, teaches and reminds us according to the will of God. 100% in agreement with that. And that's, that statement must be now applied to our lives because many people are going in just trying to find a scripture. Um, devil, if you just give, just give me two seconds, let me um, get to... Um, <coughs> which one was it again? Was it Psalm? Was it Hebrew? Was it... I, 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 you're lucky I can't remember. <laughs> Turn stop it, please. <laughs> oh, you're talking like a joke, but it's a real, real thing. True, true sir. True, real. But if you understand this, then you go in and you don't need to search for a specific word. You don't need to go in and look for a specific word from the book. You just need to be expressing the spirit, be expressing God. If you're expressing God, then God Almighty, you're, you're on point. Mm -hmm. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? If you are expressing God, you're okay. There's a, there's a word he said to me, come on. You, you who remember I was here and he said step two. Have you ever seen step two in the Bible? No, sir. How many words have you heard me spoken that you have never seen in the Bible? I've never even heard them in my life. Mm. You know. He said step two. I said step two. People got healed. People got, were, were vomiting sicknesses and diseases. Who, who have seen that before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so 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 doesn't that tell you then? That, that is still the word. It might not be the yes. written word, but it's still word. the word. Yes, sir. That is being expressed now and I can take no credit for it. Right. There's another word he gave me that I was there and paying. As a matter of fact, I don't even know if Facebook is ready for this, but I suppose, I'm, I don't kind of remember if I share this in, in the family. Who remember? Yes, I, I, what's the name of the word again? I don't know. It started with a K, or at least I wrote it like it started. Is it with a K. is it Kundusi or Kundusi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kundu, 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 Kundu. Kundu. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. When he told me that, he said, "Say it." So I said it, and the pain went. And every time I said it, the pain went, and I was like, "This is absolutely amazing." No, did I know what that word was before he said it? No. He just says things, and if you trust him, then you know that he doesn't make mistakes, right? Okay, right. let us see what Sister Princess said. She asked the question, what's the difference between seeking God's face and seeking God's hand? <laughs> 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 All right, seeking God's face, it's, to be honest, it's all subjective, but based on what is meant in the church, that's, my, that's what I'm answering, right? Seeking God's face, meaning you're uh, actually pursuing a relationship and sticking his hand mean you're actually pursuing the benefits. Yes. Mm -hmm. But in truth of fact, I could have easily ignored that and just give you a different meaning and I would have still been correct. But I'm telling you what it means based on actually, based on the, the church system. When you seek his face, you're seeking deeper relationship or getting to know him when you're seeking his hand, then you're looking for a favor and out. You're looking for the benefits of actually seeking them. Hope that makes sense. Good question. All right. Any more questions? Sadly, made up. What month are we in? What month is it? April. You sure? The last day of April. Okay, because 
this feel like December, silent night. <laughs> silent night. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> I, I think you guys are going to break into Christmas Carol in a minute now. Silent night, holy night. Oh my God. All right. All right. If you have no more questions, bless you, bless you, woman of God. No questions? You're more than welcome, woman of God. No Sir. one who has a question. All right, go on, woman of God. Let me hear your question. No, um, we have like five more minutes. Come on. So Morgan said, "Well, that wasn't a question." Oh yes, I think I read it out where he was actually saying, um, telling you about what Jesus does today. He said something. Let me see the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit represents. Okay, yes, of yes. Jesus Christ. Yes, I read it. I read it. I read it before, and that's what I was saying. I was in agreement with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have any questions from uh from here in the Zoom? Um, Apostle, um, I, I have a question, but maybe come off Facebook, sir. <laughs> no worry, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Right. Um, I want to make sure I get it. Um, the the map that leads to to Jesus. Okay, the map is the written word. Oh. Thank you. The map is the written word. Yes, I just saw a message. Yes, sorry. The map is the written word. The map is the written word that leads you to the living word. Yes. Okay. Yes. But unfortunately, many people never get to the living word. They get stuck in the map. If you have a treasure yeah. map that you're constantly just walking around with, with without ever going to find a treasure, that's a waste. You know, when your spirit not, you just know when your spirit, um, there's something uh, missing. I'm mm -hmm. trying to ask questions so my spirit will get, get, it will get into, I, I'll get it. I'll get the teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I get good. it. I was gonna that's, ask, that's important. Very important. Yeah. My next question I was going to ask you, but I got it. Because mm -hmm. if you see the map is a written word mm -hmm. that leads to the living word, why I was going to say then it sounds like it's separate. But then the map... It's not separate because the, 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 the written word is an expression of the living word. Right, exactly. I got that it. That means if I wrote my thought down on a paper, it is still me. The map is everything about who you're getting. The map is everything. Yes. It's a life. That mm. The map or the, or the written word is everything about the living word. This map should entice you enough so you would want to find the treasure for yourself. Right. It's like you're reading someone's autobiography and you hear so much about them. Their life is so intriguing and the person is right. still alive. You want to talk to that person if you can, right? Right. So it, 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 I get, I know I got it now. Now it's thinking that it is the same because you're yes. reading about the person that's going to really, you're going to really get to know, meet that okay, person. Yeah. All right, you go out, you, you, um, You'll get encounters about. I'm not making a comparison with us or with this ministry and God, but we are representatives of God. But check this out: mm -hmm. you go out and you see how awesome the ministry is. Until someone comes in, you can tell them it's a good testimony, but they can come in and check for themselves and see what's the ministry really like. Is is that person really just talking or are they biased? You know what I'm saying? Yes, so, I got. Yeah, you know the map. But it's still they're yeah. stuck in the map. They haven't even they have having an encounter. Unfortunately. Visitation. Unfortunately. And so reading someone's bio and thinking that yo, know, I, I know, I know everything about this. Of course you don't. Mm -hmm. You're so yeah. And they they will they will speak the map, but not so every time you hard. hit the nail on the head. So every time you have a discussion with them, they will go to some of the page of the bio, tell you because they have no relationship with the with yeah. the person that is in the book. Mm. Yeah. All right, here you go, Sister Angela. I am, I am holding it up again, the triangle. Does that make it plain, Sister Andrea? I think so, sir. I think I'm getting there. Okay, brilliant. Yes, sir. And I like Thank that. You don't understand, ask questions. It makes a whole lot of difference when you ask questions. Yeah. Do we have any questions on Facebook? No, no if sir. no. All right, so I guess we're bringing this one to an end. That's the written word and the living word are one and the same. And you should understand that you are representatives of the word. 
You are the light of the world. Right? Yes, sir. Salt yes, of the earth. Mm -hmm. Man, I was getting really, really ready for questions. I thought you guys were bringing so much questions tonight. Straightforward, sir. Well, straightforward. One more time. You've done it. <laughs> All right, then, the family. Love you guys. Always a pleasure. Let me salute everyone that is on Facebook. God bless you. Guys, general. Oh, 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 there's a question. All right. Let me see. Um, uh, let me see. Before we go, question. I'm going to have a question. What about the Christian that's, uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> I'm going to say, what about the, the Christians that treat God like a side chick? They're not Christians. Mm. That's the answer. They're not Christians. Right? Truthful mm -hmm. fact is, once you know God, you will never treat him in such a manner. Before mm -hmm. we go, I want you to stick around for like three more minutes. Can you give me three more minutes? Yes, sir. All right, brilliant. I'm about to go off Facebook. I want to talk to you guys in Zoom for the next couple of minutes, and then we will actually um, bring it to an end. Let me just finish saluting everyone on Facebook. Bless you, family. Salute. Catch you on the next one. God bless you. God bless you. And here we go. Someone tell me if the stream has stopped.